Welcome to the transition training for MDEX repair orders for managers and technicians. Before we begin, I would like to review a few points with you. This course is designed for users transitioning from MDEX forms to MDEX Kona. Users involved in updating work orders such as technicians, managers, and administrative staff are encouraged to watch this video. All setup and configurations that were previously available in MDEX Forms will be available in MDEX Kona. In addition, all historical information will also be available to you on the new platform. Please note, the training environment is a copy of your production environment. There may be some changes and differences depending on when the last copy was made, but rest assured, when you transition to the new platform, all information will be up to date. Access to the MDEX Kona training platform will be provided to you once you request the transition to Kona and your username and password will be the same as you use today. And finally, we strongly recommend that you watch this video in a quiet environment. Take note of any important information for your role, jot down any questions you may have and reach out to us by our online help portal or calling us so we can help you with any of your questions. Also, feel free to join our online training sessions related to this topic. Now, let's get started with the training. In this course, you will learn how to manage your service board, create estimates, work orders, and generate invoices as a manager and technician. We will review the various workflows created for work orders from managers and technicians to after the first fact work orders. After attending this course, you will know how to create and manage work orders with manager and technician functionality in MDEX Kona. To start off with, let's log in to MDEX Kona. When you first log in, you will be logging into the manager dashboard. This dashboard allows you to view your view and manage your customers create any new work orders, manage vendors, and order parts. You can also review any work orders that are previously waiting to be completed and any repairs and reports you may have generated in the past. The next tab is the service board. The service board allows you to view work in progress at a glance, schedule and check in any units for repair, and review technician status, work in progress, and any repair estimates that are in progress as well. To check in a unit for service, click on the check in on the top right hand side. Search and select the unit and add any work that is required. I will select unit 0144 and add any work that may be required. You can also select parts that may be associated with that particular activity. If you already have your service programs and SRT guides set up, this information will be transferred over from Forms. Next, you can click on Next and schedule the work with a particular technician. In this case, I'm going to assign the job to Mike and click on Submit. This allows Mike to see any work orders that are available for him to work on. So I'm going to sign out from here and show you guys what the technician portal will look like. You can click on the service board to see all the work that is assigned to him. In this case, this particular unit was assigned to the Calgary shop. So we'll select the Calgary shop and find the unit. You can click on select to select the unit. When the technician is ready to start work on this repair, he will simply click on the icon of the work that is required and this starts his time on the right hand side. If he wishes to add parts to this particular repair, he can do so in the parts tab. He can search and find the part, click on the part, issue the quantities that he wishes to issue, and click on issue part. This issues the part to the work order. If the technician would like to review the work order and the summary of that work order, he can click on the summary tab. When he clicks on the actual work, he can add any notes that he may want to add. He can also enter in his odometer readings or any other reading types, add any internal notes for the manager or any notes for the work order, and review the work order unit history. He can also copy any particular repair that was done on that unit for this job by clicking on the copy button. This copies the work and the parts to the work order. And then when you go back to the summary tab or the labor tab, this 
particular item is now on this unit. Once the technician has completed the job, he can click on Unit Ready, and this submits the job back to the technician. So now, at this point, the technician will log in and review the work order. They'll simply log in to the Complete RO screen, open the Complete RO screen, and then search for that unit. You can click on the reference number to review the unit. You take a look at the hourly charge, make any modifications as needed, maybe remove some shop charges or add any, any additional shop charges. You can also change or add any surcharges. And you can also review the profit and loss for that particular job. In this case, this particular job is net profit margin of 46.97%. Once the manager has reviewed the work order, he can click on either return to technician to return it back to the technician to make any additional changes. You can split the work order if you wish to split the work order in two separate work orders. You can also close the work order and RO for any jobs that are just done internally. And you can invoice this work order. I'm going to invoice this work order just to show you guys what it would look like. If, if any pop-ups are blocked, you can always allow, and this allows you to review the work order. This is the invoice that you can then send to your customers. Before you invoice the work order or after you've invoiced it, there are other reports that you can also review for this particular work order. You have the cost proof, which allows you to see any costs associated with this unit. It also allows you to see the customer proof, so before you invoice, you can print out the customer proof to ensure accuracy of the information on the invoice. You can also create a pick list for any parts that needs to be picked, picked for this work order. And finally, you can click on the repair order to print a paper copy of the repair order. Now let's go over the after the fact work order process. Your company may choose to skip the text test of your company may choose to skip the steps of checking in a unit on the service board, assigning a technician, and starting a work directly from the Complete RO screen. This works great for organizations where technicians will not be using the technician portal, and this allows administrators and managers to enter work orders themselves after the fact. Let's review how this is done. First, you'll go to the Complete RO screen and click on the New RO. Select the location you wish to start this work order in and select the unit that you wish to start the work order for. You can click on the green plus to add any labor and also click on the green plus to add any parts. So I'm going to add a break job after the fact, select the parts and click on OK. You can change the hourly charges at this point or the hourly charge hours. Again, modifications can be made to the work order such as labor charges and parts charges as well by clicking on the unit charge on the part and editing the unit charge. Once again, you can also make modifications to the surcharges if necessary. You can select any new surcharges that you may want. You can also select to give a discount. So I'm going to select the FET, put a flat rate, let's say $20, and click on OK. And this adds the surcharge to that work order. You can also make modifications to the readings, the invoice to information, any of the statuses on the work order. But if you're not okay, if you're not going to do any of that, you can simply click on invoice the work order. And again, this invoices out the work order and generates a PDF invoice of that particular work order. So as you can see, the after the fact work order process is fairly simple and straightforward. Next, I'd like to review the process of entering work orders that were done by outside vendors. If you need to send a repair to be done outside of your shop, this is known as a sublet work order. 
Sublet work orders can be entered on the Complete RO screen, and I will select a work order that's already there. Once you've selected the work order, you can click on the Purchasing tab. This tab can be used for labor or parts. Click on the New Purchase Order and select the Repair Shop PO. You can search and select the vendor and add the labor that was done on this particular work order. For example, if any block assembly was done, you would select block, block assembly, change the charge hours to the amount of hours that were you were charged, and click on OK. Once you have received the sublet invoice, you can simply click on Process Sublet Invoice and enter in the invoice details. This adds the work order activities done at an outside repair shop to your work order and you can simply continue the process of invoicing out this work order now. If all the work is not assigned to a particular activity, you will be asked to do so. So I'm just going to go through that process right now and click on invoice. Now let's review the process of creating repair estimates from from time to time, your customers may request a repair order estimate before authorizing the repair. In these instances, use the repair order estimate process to complete an estimate, add labor, parts, and all estimated charges to ensure your customer is aware and authorizes all work that is being done on a particular piece of equipment. To start a repair estimate, go to the service board and click on Quick Estimate on the left side. Search and select the unit for which you wish to create the estimate for. You can click on the green plus add labor button to add any labor that will be done on this particular repair. So you'll click on the labor, select the parts, and click OK. You can make any modifications to the hourly charge and add any notes and then you can simply add that labor. This adds the labor and parts. And if you wish to add any additional parts you can simply click on add parts Search for the part number, issue at the quantity that you wish to add, and click on Add Parts. Once you're satisfied with the information on the estimate, you can simply print out this estimate. Printing out this estimate allows you to give this estimate or email it to your customer for them to approve. Once your customer has approved the estimate, you can simply click on Submit, so I'm going to just close it out to show you guys what it would look like. You would come back into the estimate and click on submit. So once you've submitted to this to your customer and they have returned it back to you and they've approved the estimate, you would simply click on approve. If you would like to make any changes to the estimate, you can simply go back to the estimate and make any modifications that are necessary and submit again. Once your customer has approved the estimate, you can simply click on the approve button. This step checks in the unit for repair and you will see it on your arrivals board. And there it is, the estimate that has been approved. You can now assign this estimate to a particular technician in order for him to start work on it. Once it's assigned to a technician, the technician can go in and start his job. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a brief overview of the work order and technician functionality. For more information, feel free to review our training documentation and join the online training classes hosted by one of our application specialists. I hope you found this video helpful and be sure to watch the other videos on this page to fully, fully familiarize yourself with MDEX Kona. As always, please log a request with any questions you may have or call us at 1-888-205-8817 and press 1 for MDEX support. Thank you for watching this training session and have a great day.